Hello, Salesforce. I'm on a Walters 954 here, back with another Apex practice problem. So this is on Apex Sandbox, a free site where you can practice Salesforce development. And there are awesome sections on here on Apex and SOQL and a bunch of other stuff. But we're looking at question number 19, which is about students passing. So really quickly, if you have not given this a try, pause the video here take a stab at this and come back and see how I solved this problem to check, you know, if we did it the same way or different ways and how all that goes. So hopefully you've given this a try. Now let's see how I would do this. And the first thing is to understand the prompt here. And basically it's saying that we need to pass at least two of the criteria that exists. So the first one is past exam, past assignments, and past project. So if at least two of those are true, then we are able to move on or say that we have passed this. So when I'm first getting started, with a problem like this, I will try to get certain criteria to pass first. And to do that, let's start out with an if statement and say, if we've passed our exams, then we want to return true, return true. Otherwise, all the way at the end, we want to return false. And we know we're returning these types because of the uh, output met a variable here and then we can see all of the variables here that we get as our inputs from the method so if we just run this let's see what happens one we don't want it to break but two um, we want it to to see that some of these are passing so some of these are actually passing which I don't know if it's correct or not, but at least, you know, we're not getting a gigantic error. So one of the things that you may be noticing is that we didn't do a full Boolean check, right? So this is a Boolean pass exams equals equal equals equals true. We didn't have to do that because we are evaluating this inside of an if statement. So we're doing the check inside of the if statement and the value for pass exam is either true or false because it's a Boolean. And then an if statement is to evaluate to either true or false. So we don't need to do that additional check. The next thing we want to do is check all of the addition, the different conditions that we have. First, we want to check if past exams and past assignments are true. That's the first one we want to check. Then I'll actually just copy this and do an else if and the next permutation we have is if it's past exams and then past projects you can see that we're starting to build this out so these two need to be true or these two need to be true and then what's the last permutation that we have it would be past exams and then past projects so if we do it that way we have a we have a check on each of the different permutations that exist Let's run this again and see if we've passed it. Everything will pass. Congratulations. You know, we got this done. But can we do this simpler, right? This is very verbose and an easy way to kind of combine this all together, especially when you have if statements that return the same value is to just separate them with the or statement. Right, so these two need to evaluate to true or these two need to evaluate to true or, 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 I'll try to make it a little bit easier to read. These need to evaluate to true. All of this equals the same thing. All of these need to evaluate to true to return the true value. If not, we're going to return false. Let's run this and see what we get. So that's perfect. We've completed this. It works. It's a little long, but that's okay in terms of us learning and getting through these things. Now, I wanted to do this one more way. Let's actually delete all of this. And let's think about how we can check if we have at least two values or two conditions that have equaled to true. Every time we see a true value, we're basically saying, okay, that, that's one of the iterations or one of the conditions that we need to pass this on. And we need at least two of those conditions. So another way of thinking about this is to, every time we see a true value, let's 
add or count up until we reach two. This is a really interesting take on this problem. And what you need to do to kind of make it work is to create an integer. Let's just call this counter and start it out at zero. Then if past exams, I'll do equals equals true just to illustrate the, that they're doing the same exact thing. We want our counter plus plus, right? So we're going to increase the value inside our counter. Then the same thing for past assignments. And then finally, let me copy this again, the same thing for our past projects. Now at the end here, if counter is greater than, well, I'll actually do greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to two, then we want to return true. Else, we want to return false, right? So depending on if the criteria is met for each of these, right? We, we get to pass exam, it equals true, let's add, let's add to it, then it's one. We get to pass assignments, it's false, so let's not add to it. But it, the past projects is true, so let's add to it. And then finally, it equals true, or two, and then two is, uh, the counter is greater than or equal to two, so it will return true. So let's run this again and see what happens here. We got our fancy pants, uh, little congratulations and confetti. The last improvement that I wanna make on this is just doing a single return statement. So if counter is greater than or equal to two, Right. This will evaluate to a Boolean express, or this expression will evaluate to true or false, right? So it's the same exact thing of writing out those if statements, but this is just a little bit cleaner. Let me know in the comments down below if you've solved this in a different way or how similar our code was. As always, you can check the description for the code repository where you can take this code and change it around and make it kind of your own, especially if yours wasn't working 100%, so you can see what I was doing. Check out this video that I did some of the Sockle sorting questions, and then if this was a little bit hard, definitely check out my course on the fundamentals of Apex. This is taking you from not knowing any Apex to being able to solve problems like this. Thank you all so much for watching and remember I believe in you.